Hi, my name is Chris Sanade. I'm the Transplant Center Director here at Michigan Medicine and the Surgical Director of our Living Our Liver Transplant Program. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about living donor liver transplantation, which is one of my favorite parts of the field of transplantation. Now that you've heard a bit about why uh, living donor liver transplantation is a benefit to the recipient and why the need is so great, I wanted to talk a bit about how living donor liver transplantation is possible. As you may know, the liver is the only organ in the body other than the skin that has a regenerative or regrowth capacity. We've known for years from liver surgery for cancer and other, other reasons that if you remove a portion of a healthy person's liver, the remaining liver will grow such that within a relatively short period of time, three to four weeks, that individual will have normal liver volume remaining. And that ability of the liver to regenerate like that is what allows living donor liver transplantation to be done safely. Both the portion that remains behind in the donor and the portion given to the recipient will grow such that within three to four weeks, both the donor and recipient will have normal size liver mass. Part of our job in evaluating a donor for, for uh, living donation is not only to make certain that they are healthy to tolerate a major operation and that there is nothing wrong with their own liver, in fact, but we also look carefully at the anatomy of the donor liver and its size, because size is an important part of matching the donor liver to the recipient need. Now, all of us are approximately 2% liver by mass. Your liver accounts for about 2% of your body weight. We know that in the case of the recipient, we can give them a portion of, the, of liver that is approximately 1% of their body weight, and allow it to grow uh, over the period of time after transplant, and they will gain, be able to maintain and gain normal liver function. So the recipient needs approximately 1% liver mass at the time of transplant. On the donor side, we know again from, from surgery for cancer and other things that you can remove up to 60 or 70% of someone's liver and expect the remaining liver to function normally and grow to uh, accommodate the mass that was lost. As you probably have seen, the liver is this kind of odd triangular shape such that the right lobe is, is larger than the left lobe. Again, most of us, our right lobe is about 60% of our uh, liver mass and our left lobe is about 40%. So you can see, therefore, if you donate your right lobe, you typically have about 40% of your liver mass remaining, which is enough. And if you donate your left lobe, the smaller portion, you have 60% or so of your liver volume uh, remaining, which again is safe for donation. We use MRI as our primary screening tool for both the anatomy of the liver and also its size. We're able to create a three-dimensional reconstruction of the liver and um, measure both the size of the right lobe and the left lobe. This allows us to, to then calculate via a formula related to the recipient weight, which portion of the liver would be large enough uh, for the recipient, and also importantly, would leave enough behind for the donor to recover safely. So you can see in this example, donation of the right lobe would give the recipient 1% of uh, liver mass, which is what we're shooting for, and would still leave the donor with approximately 40% of their uh, liver mass, which would be an appropriate and safe for donation. The left lobe, in this case, which would be would leave plenty of liver for the donor, would be too small for the recipient. So in this specific example, we chose the right lobe for donation in this case. Many people ask about the surgery itself and the recovery. Uh, this is the tip, these are the typical incisions we use for a left lobe donation. The incision is located in the middle of the abdomen, is extending from just below the breastbone to just above the belly button. In right lobe donation, again, the larger portion of the liver, uh, the incision looks like a hockey stick kind of underneath the rib cage there. Most of our donors spend three to five days in the hospital with a night in the ICU initially for, for close observation. Uh, all of our donors require some pain medication after surgery, but our goal is to get them off the heavier narcotics within five days, and we use Tylenol and ibuprofen and other anti-inflammatories for pain control after that time. 
Uh, most of our donors are off narcotics actually within three to four days around the time they leave the hospital. But the average recovery time we, we quote for donors is six to 12 weeks. People that work a more sedentary job that are able to go back to work on their laptop or at a desk, a desk can often feel well enough to go back to work within three to four weeks. People that work more physical labor that requires heavier lifting or strenuous activity, we may keep out of work as long as eight to 12 weeks to allow them to fully heal and not get a hernia or any difficulties with their incision. More than 60% of donors experience no complications after donation, but there are some complications that occur, can occur in the remaining 40%. Some of these are very minor things like wound issues or urinary tract infection or other things that require just some additional treatment. Some are related to having had abdominal surgery like adhesions or an hernia that could require uh, additional surgery down the road for repair that can occur up to five to 10% of patients after major abdominal surgery. And then there can be complications specific to the liver surgery itself, like leakage of bile from the uh, bile ducts of the liver that need to be sealed as we do the donor operation. That occurs in two to 4% of donors and bleeding complications that would require a transfusion, rare, but can occur in up to two to 4% of, of donors. The latest international statistics suggest that the risk of a life-threatening complication, the risk of death related to living donation is on the order of about one in five to 600 operations, which is obviously very rare, but does speak to the importance of respecting this operation for the, uh, for the uh, significance that it is and all of our team from the evaluation period through to the anesthesia, the surgery, and the post-operative recovery is committed not only to giving the donor the best experience, but really the safest possible experience in their donation. The miracle of living donation occurs in moments like this. This is one of our donors with her father to whom she donated. This is on the morning after transplant. Uh, this is a transformative, life-saving operation for our recipients and is an incredible act of generosity for our donors. Uh, it also allows us to do incredible things like save the life of this little kid who uh, we transplanted a couple of years ago and who's done wonderfully with the living donor. So we're really grateful to be able to do this work and we're grateful to be able to share with it uh, with you today. And we look forward to the discussion. Thank you very much.